there, it's been a while, hasn't it? Um, yeah, a week or two, and, uh, excuse me. Ah, it's completely rubbish. Hasn't been that long. You've been on my mind, actually. Other things have been on my mind. Um, I've been distracted. Um, these hands, these hands have been doing stuff. First of all, we uh, had a root in the bathroom. That's not how it was meant to come out. But anyway, these hands got dirty, uh, fixing a plumbing problem that actually probably goes back to the days this house was built. And then also I got distracted by another project. The back of my dear Hilux Ute truck, if you're American, uh, has always been covered in some old floorboards from a renovation job I did ooh, 20 years ago. And over time, they've fallen apart, become pretty crappy. You know, that whole splintery in the bum thing when you go camping on the back of the ute. So I decided to take the tray off the ute, completely renovate it, and then put some plastic on it. Actually, this eco wood claims to be 90% recycled timber and plastic, but it doesn't say how much of it's timber and how much of it's plastic. Although when you cut it, it smells like polypipe. So I'm going to say right now that it has a lot of polyethylene in it, which is okay because that's fully recyclable. When my ute dies, well, <laughs> when my ute dies, there will be some recycled plastic to be recycled and used by someone else. That's got to be a good thing. Anyway, I'm sorry it's been a while. I think you deserve my apology. <sighs> Thank you for the messages of encouragement, those people who've said, where's the next video, Andrew? Sadly, there's not been a lot done to the boat. It's sitting in the corner under like a good layer of dust, but I am going to get back to it. But luckily, I actually have a whole bunch of video already shot from previous work ethics. Ethics? Efforts? Something or other. Anyway, this video I'd like to talk about this. This is glass, like you would have in the window, or the bottle of Coke. No, that comes in plastic these days. But anyway, this is glass. It's spun into a long fibre and then woven into a cloth. And this is what I put around the outside of the MDF in an effort to keep the water out. We know that water and MDF, they're not friends. Not friends at all. So what we did was we gave the MDF a light sanding to remove like the glossy surface um, that comes out of the manufacture of MDF. It's sort of a bit waxy on the top, I guess. And this allowed the resin, the matrix that you use with this, to soak into the MDF just a little bit and bond this to it and provide us with like a, a waterproof layer over the top of MDF. It's called sheathing in glass reinforced plastic. There are other sheathing materials. Uh, one in, that comes to mind is Dynel, but Dynel is good because it takes a lot less resin to like wet it out translucent, more on that later. Um, and it's, I believe, very good abrasion resistance. It's also a bit more expensive than this and it doesn't have the strength of fiberglass. If I pull it along the, there we are. If I pull it along the actual fibers rather than on the diagonal, you can see this has some inherent strength in it. It wasn't very scientific. Anyway, basically fiberglass reinforcement is a fiber of some sort and a resin matrix that you pour on this, spread it out until the ratio of resin to cloth is right. And, and this changes depending on what sort of fiberglassing you're doing. We're using epoxy on this. I don't really use polyester or vinyl ester anymore. I used to, uh, but epoxy is actually affordable now. So I use that because it's like far superior. One of the big things is it takes a lot less epoxy resin to wet out fiberglass than it does to wet out the, than polyester resin. Did I just go sideways there? 
takes more polyester resin uh, than epoxy resin to make this fiberglass mat function. In fact, with epoxy, it's 50-50. With uh, the polyester resins, it varies depending on what type of polyester or slash vinyl ester it is, but it's more than that, and it's probably two-thirds resin, one-third cloth, which is going to make it a little heavier. But you can do a fibre-reinforced plastic um, system in many ways. There's, um, you can buy fiberglass in tape like this, although it's quite expensive, but if you're trying to fix a seam or a crack, that might be easier than cutting this into strips. You've probably heard of carbon fiber, absolutely wonderful stuff. Did you know I'm building a space shuttle out the back? And this, this is Aramid, also called Kevlar, which is impossible to cut. I mean, look at the mess I've made on this. Um, and this is what they make bulletproof vests out of, but you could put a resin slash thermo setting plastic as a matrix in this, you would get a very, very tough um, substrate or product at the end of it. The difference being, this is cheap, this is tough, this is stiff. You use carbon fiber if you're wanting rigidity, you use Kevlar if you're wanting toughness, so that's something that can take a pounding without failing, and you use fiberglass if neither of those things are particularly important. Okay, so about these resins. I use West System 105 resin, which comes with a range of hardeners depending, depending on which you want to use it for. There's a fast hardener if you're in a cold climate, let's say 20 degrees Celsius or below. There's a slow hardener if you're in Australia, and currently we're looking at 38 degrees today. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Weatherman. Uh, I won't be doing any resining today because, quite frankly, 38 degrees, that's board gaming inside in the aircon weather. Uh, there's a clear hardener, which will not yellow. <laughs> well, it will probably yellow a bit, but it will not yellow when exposed to ultraviolet light, i.e. the sun. Um, so if you want to do a clear finish over a tabletop or something like that, um, you can use the special clear hardener and the resin will maintain like a fairly clear um, surface. I did a table out the back, just poured the hardener on and let it, let it run down over the edges and for five or six years you could still see the wood under it pretty well. It needs a little bit of maintenance now but it's not bad. So there's a fast, a slow, I think there's one called a tropical as well. I'm not sure about that, um, which would be for like super hot environments and the clear finish. When you mix your resin, you'll notice the hardeners are generally slightly yellow, uh, except the clear one. And you know, that's possibly, it's possibly the hardener in epoxy that actually creates the yellowing effect. I don't know. Anyway, all of the, the 105 system resins get mixed at a ratio of one to five. Oh, wonder if that's how they got their 105. Anyway, one to five. So five parts resin, one part hardener. And you do this by volume, except that's a bit awkward unless you want to be cleaning measuring cups out all the time. So I just use a set of scales because the density of the hardener and the density of the resin are very close to each other, enough for me not to bother. Like, it's never, ever been a bother, a problem, an issue. N nothing like fiberglass has fallen apart over the years. So what you'll need is a, a little set of scales. This is a doctor's tongue depressor. Most uh, fiberglassing shops will sell you a box of like a gazillion of these for a few dollars. They're the best mixing thing ever. Get some. Then we're going to talk about spreading the resin over the fiberglass. The easiest way to do fiberglassing is on a flat surface. So if you can make the surface that you want a fiberglass flat, do so. Pour the resin on, pouring the resin on, and then spread the resin out. This is, uh, I would call this a squeegee, and you can see it's nice and flexible. And it's what I use if I'm working on a flat surface. If I'm working into a corner or somewhere aw awkward, a little brush is the answer there. The goal is 
to get as little resin on the glass, the, the matting, the glass, as you possibly can and still have it translucent. If you haven't put enough on, you will be able to see a milkiness or a whiteness or that the color of the fiber in, in the mat will show. If you've put too much on, um, the, the fiber will float up off the surface. In this case, our fiberglass will tend to float up in the resin off the MDF. And that's not going to be as strong as it should be. And it's going to be heavy. Um, not that we're too concerned about weight, but let's, you know, try and get it right. So you want your woven mat, your woven mat to be as firmly stuck down to the MDF. This is my MDF hand, the MDF as you can. So if you put too much resin on, this will tend to float up. And generally, you don't want that. So at the end of your fiberglassing, you should be able to just see the weave if you look at it on an angle and but it should be like that should only be like a texture rather than a color because if you if it looks white like this anywhere you need to put some more resin on give it some working now a few other things about this obviously you want to measure the area you want to fiberglass reasonably well and cut this glass out to that shape and lay it on Sometimes you have to work on a vertical surface, and if that's the case, I tend to use clips or bits of tape to hold this up. I would use a low-tack blue tape because like this stuff frays like bilio. Look, look, look at this. So like if you're busy overworking this away, you'll very quickly get all these fibers tangled up in your brush. Um, a lot of guys actually use a roller to actually roll this into the resin. Um, I don't, because if you have a raw edge, this will get wrapped around the roller and then just that just causes more fraying um, and you end up with a mess to clean up. Squeegee works fine, brush works fine, just takes a bit of practice. Where was I? Anyway, oh yes. So basically, cut this to shape, lay it over the surface that you want to do. And like when you're putting any coating on, whether it's paint or primer or fiberglass, uh, make sure the surface is prepared. So we're talking dust free, lightly sanded um, so that there's something for the resin to key into. And um, then pour the resin on like you're putting tomato sauce onto a burger and then spread the resin out and work it backwards and forwards. Do not mix too much. I'm a bit average at this. So I only ever mix about 300 grams of resin at a time. Uh, and that's if I'm doing a really easy area. If I'm working resin into a little corner or something where I have to use a brush, I limit myself to about 150 because that's about how much I can do on a normal temperature day before the resin starts to like gel a bit. And if you're working with your resin and it starts to like become goopy and what have you, then throw it away. Don't, don't, don't continue, throw it away, mix yourself some more um, and go again because quite frankly, you want your resin to be as liquid as possible to work its way into the glass to do what it has to do. It's got to bind all these fibers together. Fiberglass works on the same principles as reinforced concrete, actually. The resin matrix uh, is the compressive strength, like compression being pushing stuff, and the fiber itself is the tensile strength. So when you add compression and tensile strength, you end up with a nice balance. And in concrete, the steel is the tension strength and the concrete is the compression strength. If you try and pull concrete apart, it just, it actually just falls apart. It has nearly no strength when you're trying to like stretch it. But if you want to like load it inwards with compression, it's enormously strong. Okay, so that's enough of me banging on about tension and compression. Let's get on with putting fiberglass on the hull. So the first thing I did was measure carefully how big the pieces need to be, cut them out and then fold them up neatly so I can unfold them on the surface without getting tangled up. If you have any sharp edges or snags that you, when you drag the fiberglass over, it will ladder like a stocking. It's a fairly open weave and not very stable, which is a good thing when you're trying to use it but it's a bad thing if you plan to drag it over something because it will get caught at the slightest, the slightest chance it has. 
Anyway, so we smooth it out over the boat as smoothly as we can. You will notice the chines or the edges of the boat I've rounded to 10 millimeter radius because we spoke earlier on that fiberglass does not like going round sharp corners. So now we've got the fiberglass on the boat, the next thing we're going to do is apply our resin. Resin needs to be mixed properly, so after you finish stirring it, stir it a little bit more. You want to make sure it's well combined, the hardener and the, um, the not hardener. <laughs> the resin and the hardener needs to be well stirred together. As I said earlier on, we're just going to pour it on, um, spread it around a bit with our squeegee. And as you'll notice as we spread, the, um, the, the glass becomes translucent and clear. And this is how you know you've got the right amount on. I use the squeegee a little bit like a, you know, a grater blade. You see graters on roads where they push a big pile of sand and the sand starts at one side of the blade, moves along and makes a little, a little mound on the other side. They call them a windrow, I think. So when I'm squeegeeing backwards and forwards, if you look, I'm leaving a bit behind. I'm sort of pushing the resin around the surface across the squeegee. So if you go backwards and forwards, you end up pushing like a little wave or a little puddle from one side of the surface to the other. And then you go back again. And like we discussed earlier, we're going to try and make the fiberglass translucent with the minimum amount of resin that we possibly can. At the end of this, you want your job to look like it has a, a, a woven texture to it. If it looks smooth on the surface, you've put too much resin on and the glass is probably floating off the surface or there's big puddles on top. Wasteful and um, not strong either. You want uh, multiple layers of fiberglass to be as close to each other and as close to the surface you're reinforcing as possible. Anyway, um, this is really just about um, fiberglassing flat surfaces. Um, I think in the next video we'll talk a little bit about doing awkward shapes uh, vertical sides and, and how to deal with like strange little bits that we're just, you know, laying the cloth evenly over something and pouring resin on and squeegeeing it around is clearly not going to work. <sighs> anyway, sorry it's been so long since the last video. Like it, it has been a long time. I've really let this project slip a bit, but I'm not giving up. I, I will finish this. I will finish this. And there are more videos to come. Initially, when I started this, I thought there would be like about four. Probably there's going to be about 10. Um, and one of those will include an adventure I have planned for the little boat, should it and when it works. Anyway, thanks for sticking around and watching. Please subscribe and like and share with your friends.